Hi everyone! In this episode we're going to export all the textures we've worked on and write them out as files that we can store on our computer. So we can then import those files into other applications such as Modo where you might want to produce nice looking renders of your work. So if you remember, our project is currently made up of channels and layers. Each of our channels has a number of layers within them which are storing the paint data required for our textures. In order to export our textures out of Mari, we have to export the texture data from each channel. You can also export textures directly from single layers, but understandably this will take some time as we have so many layers. It will also create far too many files, and it isn't going to consolidate the layers on each of our channels into one file, which is what we need. Exporting from channels will take all the layers in each of our channels and consolidate them into one texture file for each UDIM or patch on our object. Open up the channels palette and right click one of the channels we have here. You'll see a few export options in the right click menu which are export manager, export and export flattened. You can also access these options in the channels menu along the menu bar. Today we're going to make use of the export manager as this is one of the more efficient workflows for exporting all of our channels out of here but let's quickly go over the export and export flattened options. The main difference between export and export flattened is that export is going to export every layer in our channel as a single texture file. An export flattened is going to flatten all the layers in our channel and export it as one texture file per channel. For the purpose of exporting each channel out as a single texture file per patch, we don't want to use the export option as this is going to leave us with a texture file per individual layer we have in our channel. That might be really useful if you want to import certain layers into a Mari project, but we really want to flatten our layers, so we only end up with one texture file per channel per patch, which is what our export manager is also going to do by default. So let's quickly run over the options inside of these two functions. Export current channel is going to bring up a dialog for you to export the currently selected channel only. Export all channels is going to bring up a dialog for you to export all the channels available in your project. Export everything is going to export all channels in your project across all available objects. We only have one object in our project, but in the future you might have multiple objects, so that option might be more useful for those scenarios. But it's definitely best to use the export manager. Under export flattened we have one more option which is export flattened to geo channel. We aren't utilising geo channels in our project, but it's something you might want to look into in the near future. So you can check out the Geo Channels video and documentation to learn more about them. This option is going to export our current channel with all layers flattened to a Geo Channel. The Export Manager does all this in one dialog, and I find it much easier to use, so today we'll be using that to export our textures. So open up the Export Manager. At the top of the window you'll see the Export Route Path. Select a path from here to export all your textures to. I've just created a new folder to put all the textures from this project inside. Next to object name, we can specify the object we want to export textures for. In our case, we only have one object, so it's going to be listed here by default. Add new export items we don't need to worry about this time, because as we create channels, an export item is automatically added for it. But this option could be useful if you want to include bake point nodes in your export. Again, bake point nodes are something we have not covered in this beginner's course, but might be something you want to start looking at after this if you're interested in learning about the node graph, so please check out the documentation on that. In the main panel of the window, our available channels are listed. These are the channels we created during our texturing process. You can disable any of these channels if you don't want to export the textures for it, but we do need to export all of them, so make sure they're all enabled. The size, colour space and depth are all set to same as source by default and let you know the specific source information in brackets. If you do want to change any of these, you can right click the cell and select set size, set colour space or set depth. But be aware that converting the source textures from one value to another can cause loss of information or pixelated information if the export size is going to be larger than the source. The file name column allows us to set the name of the file and the format. If you hover over the cells under file name, you can see some information about each attribute you could use in the file name. For example, if we use the dollar sign channel dollar sign udim in the file name, which it is as default, 
During the export process, the channel part is going to be replaced with the channel name that's being exported. And the UDIM part is going to be replaced with the UDIM that's being exported. Let's right click the cell and type in dollar sign entity dot dollar sign channel dot dollar sign UDIM dot TIFF. You can swap out the dot TIFF for any file format which Mari supports. And those supported file types are actually listed in the other export dialogues. The dollar sign entity part of our file name is going to swap out entity for the name of our object, which you can see here. The file options column lets us set some options related to the texture files, which will be exported. Right click one of the cells and select set file options. If the file format you chose has any options available to it, they would be listed here, but TIFF does not. Keeping the alpha channel is only useful if the channel has transparent areas in it. We don't have that in our project, so we can disable that to keep the file sizes down. When enabled, Full Edge Bleed is going to take the very edge of the UV patch and extend it across the whole patch to try and eliminate problems with seams. You only need to enable this if you're experiencing seam issues, but it will make the export process a bit longer. I don't think we need to enable this today, since I don't think we have that many seam problems. Small Textures is actually going to be quite useful to us because Small Textures is going to identify any patches on any channel that only has one constant colour with no painted detail and forces the exported texture to be a small 8x8 pixel texture file, saving you a lot of time and reducing file sizes massively. So let's enable that. Post Process command is going to allow you to enter some commands into this text field that you want Mari to perform once the export is complete. For example, you could use this field to tell Mari to copy exported textures to a pre-existing backup folder. We're not going to do this today, but feel free to check out the Export Manager documentation to learn more about those commands. Status is going to tell us any messages that require our attention. For example, if there are already textures in our root path folder using the same name and convention as the names we've defined here. Make sure to read the messages under the status column to make sure there are no errors or actions you need to take. You can override the size, colour space, depth and post process commands for all the exported channels using the export override section, which is very useful if you need to do a batch edit on all of these channels. But since our source size, colour space and depth are going to suit our needs, we don't need to do this. Be aware that if you do decide to override any of these, you could potentially lose information in your textures in the export. The project won't be affected however. You can choose to limit the amount of patches you export for by changing the patches drop down from all to selected. You can select patches in the patch palette, then choose the selected option here if you only want to export textures from those patches. However, we want to export all textures for all patches, so leave this as all. Once you're happy, hit the Export Current button. This will export items from the current object. If we clicked Export All, this exports everything from all objects in the project. You can watch the process in the lower right of the Mari window. When that's finished, you can head over to the root path you specified in the Export Manager and check out all of your textures. Since this object has seven UDIMs or seven UV patches, we have seven textures per channel. You can now import these texture files into external applications of your choice or any external application that supports multiple UDIMs or patches. We've gone through many of the features in Mari and you should now have a good understanding of how to use many of the tools in Mari to now paint textures for your own projects. But there is still so much to learn Go and check out the rest of the courses and videos on the Mari Learn page, in particular Michael Wilde's Fundamentals course, and don't be afraid to ask questions and start discussions on the Mari forums. I really hope you've enjoyed this Mari Beginners course and feel more confident with Mari.